In this tutorial, we'll learn how to create a dynamic parent-child relationship between some objects in Blender, which you can easily change or remove at the middle of an animation. This is done with multiple child of constraints put together. We will create a scene like this, where a ball is initially a child of this first cart, and it moves with this cart. Then a switchover happens, and the ball becomes a child of another cart, and it then moves with that cart, so their relationship is dynamic. In the base file of this tutorial, we have added two tracks. And two carts are moving along these tracks. Now we'll add a third object, and make it jump from one cart to another through a change of its parent, in the middle of the animation. So let us add one, UV sphere. We have to ensure that no location or rotation offset is present for this. While the sphere or the ball is selected, press the shift key, and then select this cart. Now from the object menu, go to snap, and choose this option called selection to active. And the ball will move to the same location as of this cart. They now share the same origin point. But we need to move it up little bit. Let us change its Z location here. We can use a round figure, like 2.5. Now, if we create a simple parent-child relationship between the ball and the cart, the ball will move along with the cart. But this traditional method has a problem. If we do that, we won't be able to change that relationship dynamically. But we want to break this relation somewhere here, in the middle of its journey, and then attach the ball to the second cart. So we'll use a different method for this requirement. Let us select the ball, and go to the Object Constraint tab. We'll add a constraint called Child of Constraint. In this target field, we have to select this cart, which is cart number 1. This will now work exactly like a parent-child relationship, so the ball will now move along with the cart. But there is a difference because of this influence factor. We can use this field to break the parent-child relationship anytime, even at the middle of an animation. Or we can again bring it back. Let us now go to frame number 125. This is where the two carts come to their closest distance, so we will switch over the parent at this position. We'll use 10 frames before this, and 10 frames after this, for the switch over to take place. So let's go to frame number 115. Here, we have to keyframe the current value of this influence factor. Now go to the next frame. We need to reduce the influence factor to zero here. But you can see that the ball now goes back to its initial position, whereas we want the ball to remain at its final position after the parent is removed, like this. Exactly for this purpose, we have a cross button present here. If you click on this button, the parent-child relationship will be removed, and the ball will stay here permanently. But we don't want that thing either. We want the ball to follow the animation without any change, and at the last frame, we want it to remain in this position. So let us change the influence factor to zero, and insert a keyframe for this. Now go back to the previous frame where the influence factor is 1. Then select the ball and go to the object properties. We have to insert a keyframe for each of these location values. And if you have any rotation values, you need to keyframe them as well. Then go to the next frame. The ball is now back to its initial position, so while the ball is selected, press the shift key on your keyboard and select this card here. Then go to the object menu, and like before, use this option, to match the location of the ball to that of the cart. But we need to also move the ball upward like before, so let us manually change its Z location to 2.5. And we need to keyframe these values. So effectively, we manually set the location of the ball for the last frame. And this also means, the switchover will practically happen from frame number 116. Now go to frame number 135. This is 10 frames after the carts come to the closest distance. While the ball is selected, press the shift key and select the second cart. Then from the object menu, let us match their location like before. So the ball comes inside this second cart. But we'll move it upward to make it visible, so we have to manually rectify this Z location. And we need to keyframe these as usual. Now we'll create a parent-child relationship between these two. So go to the Object Constraint tab and minimize this constraint. Then we have to add another child of constraint, and this time in the target object, we have to select cart 2, which is this cart. Now one important point to note is, this frame number plays a very vital role in a child of constraint, because this constraint will pick up the location and the rotation data of the child object based on this particular frame number. So if you add this constraint, when your viewport is set to some random frame number, it may not work as you expect it to do. So we have to be on the correct frame number in the viewport, when we actually select this constraint from this drop-down list. 
And the correct frame number is that frame, where this constraint is turned to 1, and maybe keyframed as well. Then for the previous frame, we should make it 0, and also keyframe it. So their parent-child relationship will start from frame number 135. Let us now go to frame number 110, and verify the result. So the switchover happens perfectly, but it will look better, if the ball makes a jump here, maybe like this, instead of a straight movement. So we'll go somewhere in between, where the ball is crossing this line. Let us go few frames ahead, maybe somewhere here. Now in the object properties, we will change the Z location to say 5. And we need a key frame. Let us go back again, and this time, we will see that the ball is making a jump, just as we wanted. So if we verify this from the beginning, we'll see that the ball is initially a child of the first cart, then it makes a jump and becomes a child of the second cart. So you can use this technique to create a dynamic relationship between multiple objects and control the movement of an object at the runtime without making any fixed parent beforehand. This can be proved very useful when you work in a long duration animation. So I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.